Hello and welcome to Hornbill TV's Prime at 9. I'm Naomi Kikon. Now the news in details. In protests against the government policies affecting workers, farmers and people, a joint forum of central trade unions has given a call for a nationwide strike on March 28 and 29. The joint platform of central trade unions held a meeting in Delhi on March 22, 2022 to take stock of the preparations in various states and sectors for the proposed two-day All India strike on 28 and 29 March 2022 against the anti-worker, anti-farmer, anti-people and anti-national policies of the central government, a statement said. The meeting, took place no, the meeting took note of the fact that, emboldened by the results of the recently held state elections, the BJP government at the centre has intensified the attacks on the working people, reducing the interest rate of EPF accumulations to 8.1% from 8.5% sudden hike in petrol, LPG, kerosene, CNG and more. Taking steps to implement their program of monetization, PSU lent bundles but are held back only because of the worsening condition of inflation and crashing share markets. The meeting contempt these policies, it stated. The meeting welcomed the reiteration by the Samyukta Gisan Morcha that will observe rural band on 28 and 29 March. The meeting appealed to various unions of state levels to join the strike to oppose the anti-labor policies of the central government, the four labor courts being its a clearing example. After a coronavirus pandemic-induced hiatus of over two years, regular international flights resumed from Sunday with airports and airlines getting ready for normal overseas operations. Battered by the pandemic, the airline industry is slowly coming back to normalcy and the resumption of normal overseas flights is expected to provide a fillip to the sector. As many as 60 airlines from 40 countries have been permitted to operate 1,783 frequencies to and from India during the summer schedule, according to DGCA. The summer schedule will be effective from March 27 till October 29. A total of 1,466 international departures per week have been approved for six Indian carriers for the customer schedule. They will operate to 43 destinations in 27 countries as per the Directorate General of Civil Aviation. गर्मी के स्केड्यूल के आधार पर 135 नए फ्लाइट्स का उद्घाटन हुआ है अभी वाराणसी और गोरखपुर की फ्लाइट की शुरुआत मैंने उत्तर प्रदेश के मुख्यमंत्री योगी आदित्यनाथ जी के साथ की है और उसी के साथ आज के दिवस पर दोबारा भारत को विश्व के साथ जोड़ने का तारतम्य शुरू हो चुका है सारे अंतरराष्ट्रीय फ्लाइट्स आज से खुल चुके हैं भारत को पूरे विश्व के साथ जोड़ने का अभियान दोबारा शुरू हुआ है राष्ट्र के अंदर 100 प्रतिशत कैपेसिटी हमने 18 अक्टूबर को खोल दी थी अब अंतरराष्ट्रीय जगत के साथ जोड़ने की कैपेसिटी आज से 100 प्रतिशत पूर्ण रूप से खुल चुकी है in a setback to Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan, a cabinet member belonging to Pakistan Derek E. Insaf Ali, Jamuri Watan Party has resigned a day before no confidence vote. Shah Zain Bukti, who was serving as a special assistant to Prime Minister on Harmony and Reconciliation in Balochistan, has resigned and joined the Pakistan Democratic Movement, a political front opposing the Imran Khan regime. Shah Zain Bukti is a grandson of Akbar Bukti, a prominent leader of the Baloch movement who was killed by the Pakistan army in 2006 in Balochistan's Golu town. The resignation by an ally comes moments before the crucial rally by Imran Khan in Islamabad. The rally is being seen as a show of strength by the Prime Minister day before the Assembly takes no confidence filed against the PTI government. The opposition claims it has the required 172 lawmakers in the 342 member assembly to remove the government. While the opposition has decided to table the no confidence motion against Imran Khan government, the former cricketer turned politician has asked his supporters to carry out the national assembly and not allow members to go in. However, 50 federal ministers of Pakistan movement are said to be missing, Pakistan Daily Express Tribune had reported. Out of those missing Pakistan ministers, 
25 were federal and provincial advisors and special assistants, while four of them are the ministers of the state, four are advisors and 19 are the special assistants. Manipur Chief Minister Anbiran Singh on Sunday said that the state government is trying to bring all the people who are stranded due to the indefinite bond being imposed by the Southern Angami Public Organization. Speaking to reporters, the Chief Minister said that he has instructed all Manipur bound passengers and goods loaded trucks to take Jiribam and Imphal Road instead of Imphal to Dimapur National Highway until the issue is settled. Singh also informed that Chief Secretary of the State has already written to his Nagaland counterpart on March 23, requesting forego existence among the people of both the states and the issue relating to territories and boundary be settled amicably through negotiations. The Nagaland counterpart was also urged to take up the matter with representatives of SAPO for immediate withdrawal of the indefinite bond, he said. The Chief Minister further said that Minister Awang Bo Niumai is communicating with the SAPO representatives. It may be mentioned that the SAPO has imposed indefinite bond within Southern Angami jurisdiction due to non withdrawal of Manipur security personnel and developmental activities at Gesolsa. Earlier, the SAPO informed that the bond will continue till their demands are met. Uh, uh, regarding the uh, Sapo, sir, Sapo indefinite ban, sir, you have already written to the Nagaland counterpart, sir. Still, sir, ban is on, sir. And it goes for long, then it will uh, again uh, impact to the people of Manipur, particularly the very general, general public, sir, traveling particularly in this route, sir. So, what we are going to do, sir? No, already diverted the road. No stranded buses is there, trucks is there, already we have. Uh, uh, areas alternative roads. In the meantime, just today I have given in the, my statement in the assembly and that will be in the way. Manipur Chief Minister Anbiran Singh has announced the state government's action plan, 100 action points for first 100 days at the Chief Minister's Secretary today. The action points will provide momentum to the new government to serve the people of Manipur effectively throughout the five years. Addressing the media, the Chief Minister stated that a new government, in recognition of the trust of the people of Manipur, aimed to strengthen citizen-centric governance, fill gaps in critical infrastructure, frame policies for rapid economic growth and promotion of revenue generation and strive for inclusive development of the entire state. Reading out some of the major points from the 100 Action Plan, the Chief Minister informed that a subdivision in development monitoring mission would be launched for which designated Prabhari officers would be appointed for regularly monitoring and competitive ranking of progress. Health camps would be organized in each block during the first 100 days. He also informed that e-office would be introduced in all the government offices. The other important activities included inauguration of solar power system for government health facilities, inauguration of 16 model Anganwadi centers, Manipur Old Age Pension Scheme and CM Widows Pension Scheme and more. Thousands of crores uh, and a very important uh, infrastructure like uh, you know the civil secretaries is lying. So we are targeting to complete it within 100 days. And you see the Polo statue. Uh, everyone knows that Polo is, uh, modern Polo is originated from Manipur, but we do not have a statue of the, uh, the Polo Euro margin. But we are consulting it and we are also targeting to complete it within 100 days. The Chief Minister also mentioned that the state government, with an aim towards making Manipur corruption free, had constituted the anti corruption cell in the office of the Chief Minister. The office in charge of this cell will be an officer not below the rank of an administrative secretary. The anti-corruption cell would transfer actionable complaints to the competent authority and necessary action will be initiated by concerned authority within 24 hours, he said. The Central Bureau of Investigation has named 21 people as accused in the Birbam massacre in which eight people were beaten and burned alive earlier this week, 
triggering political furor. The list of accused is the same as that of the state police, sources said. The agency, however, has questioned the ruling Trinamool Congress's bloc president, Anarul Hussein, who Chief Minister Mamda Banerjee had promised will be arrested. Around 20 people have been arrested after six women and two children, mostly of members of a single family, were locked in their homes and burned alive by a mob at a Bogdui village near Birpam's Ramburha town earlier this week. The attack was allegedly retaliation to the murder of a local Trinamool Congress leader, Patu Sheikh, who died in a bomb attack. The CBI team has set up a temporary camp at a government guest house in Ramburhat. Led by senior officer Akhilesh Singh, the team has now split up and started work by visiting the home of Sona Sheikh, whose house was set ablaze. Most of the bodies were recovered from this home in Boktui village, including that of the newly married couple, Lili Katun and her husband. Following the horrific Birbam incident, West Bengal leader of opposition and party Chanda party leader Suvendu Atikari on March 26 held a protest march against ongoing violence in the state. CBI ka team ka saath ham log ka koi relation nahi. O court ka direction ke upar kar raha hai, uska kam unko khodne dijiye. हम लोग का जो मांग है गृहमंत्री को अपनी पद छोड़ना पड़ेगी हाँ पुलिस मिनिस्टर को अपनी पद से त्याग पत्र जल्दी जल्दी देना पड़ेगी और जो गुंडागर्दी चल रहा है खत्म होना चाहिए लगातार बम और असली आज भी कालिया चौक में एक ब्लास्ट हुआ चार चार साल की एक बच्चे एक बच्चे की मौत हुई या तीन को घायल हुआ Multiplex giants PVR and Inox on Sunday announced the merger of the two companies in what could be seen one of the biggest business amalgamations of the year. Merger to bring together two of India's best cinema brands to deliver an unparalleled consumer experience with a network of more than 1,500 screens, Inox said in a statement. The merger will happen in a share exchange swap ratio, wherein three equity shares of PVR will be swapped for 10 equity shares of Inox. The process, however, is subject to approval of the shareholders of Inox and PVR Securities and Exchange Board of India. Stock exchanges and other regulatory, regulatory approvals as may be required, the statement added. The combined entity, once the merger is complete, will be known as PVR Inox Limited. Screens that are already existent under the ambit of respective companies will continue as PVR and Inox. However, TOS opened post the merger will operate under the combined name. Ajay Bichli, Bichli will be appointed as the managing director of the combined PVR Inox firm, while Sanjeev Kumar will be the executive director. Pavan Kumar Jain would be appointed as the non executive chairman of the consolidated board. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Sunday urged the listeners of his monthly radio program Man Ki Baat to save every drop of water and also recycle and reuse water whenever possible. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Sunday in his Man Ki Baat urged the citizens to save every drop of water and also recycle and also the Prime Minister shared several examples from across the country of the people who have made water conservation their life mission. चार सौ बिलियन डॉलर यानी तीस लाख करोड़ रुपये के एक्सपोर्ट का टारगेट हासिल किया है पहली बार सुनने में लगता है कि ये अर्थव्यवस्था से जुड़ी बात है लेकिन ये अर्थव्यवस्था से भी ज्यादा भारत के सामर्थ्य भारत के पोटेंशियल से जुड़ी बात है एक समय में भारत से एक्सपोर्ट का आंकड़ा कभी सौ बिलियन कभी डेढ़ सौ बिलियन कभी दो सौ बिलियन तक हुआ करता था अब आज भारत चार सौ बिलियन डॉलर पर पहुंच गया है इसका एक मतलब ये कि दुनिया भर में भारत में बनी चीजों की डिमांड बढ़ रही है दूसरा मतलब ये कि भारत की सप्लाई चेन 
दिनों दिन और मजबूत हो रही है Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla participated in the concluding ceremony of the 7-year non-violence march at Dalgotra Stadium in Delhi on March 27. While addressing the closing ceremony of Jan Kalyan Kari Ahinsa Yatra, Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla said Acharya ji undertook a non-violence journey in the country and approach in which he has done it with a determination of goodwill, virtue and morality. Ne <laughs> इस यात्रा में भारत के अलग अलग राज्यों उनके गांव धानी शहरों में तो पद यात्रा की इसके साथ साथ आचार्य जी ने हमारे पड़ोसी देश नेपाल और भूटान की भी यात्रा की और वहां भी उन्होंने भारतीय संस्कृति और आध्यात्म का संदेश वहां की जनता तक पहुंचाए यूनियन कोल मिनिस्टर ब्रह्लाद जोशी सेट दैट देयर इज नो शॉर्टेज ऑफ कोल इन द कंट्री देयर इज नो कोल शॉर्टेज इन द कंट्री इलेक्ट्रिसिटी प्रोडक्शन हैज नॉट डिक्रीज एनीवेयर ड्यू टू द कोल स्टोरेज इंटरनेशनल कोल प्राइसेस हैव गॉन अप सब्सटेंशियली बट प्रोडक्शन इज टेकिंग प्लेस इन ह्यूज क्वांटिटीज द एवरेज स्टॉक ऑफ कोल इज 11 टू 12 डेज सेड यूनियन मिनिस्टर जोशी आज के दिन में ऐसे कोल शॉर्टेज नहीं है ठीक है कई एक आध दिन पहले हम 17 डेज 16 डेज का रहता था वो 14 डेज 13 डेज 12 डेज हुआ होगा लेकिन कोयले के कमी के कारण कई भी पावर जनरेशन हिट हुआ है कम हुआ है ऐसा नहीं है तो इंपोर्ट तो बंद हो गए लेकिन हमारा प्रोडक्शन भी बहुत बड़ी मात्रा में पावर डिमांड ज़्यादा हो गया बहुत ज़्यादा हो गया है फिर भी हम आज के दिन में 12 दिन का स्टॉक एवरेज 11-12 दिन का स्टॉक है The prices of petrol and diesel were hiked again on Sunday for the fifth time in a week leading to an increase of rupees 3.70 and rupees 3.75 per liter respectively since Tuesday. Petrol and diesel after the hike of 50 paisa and 55 paisa respectively in Delhi are now being sold at rupees 99.11 per liter and rupees 90.42 per liter today. In Mumbai the prices of petrol and diesel were hiked by 53 paisa and 58 paisa respectively. Now the people in the finance capital will have to pay rupees 113.88 for petrol and rupees 98.13 for diesel. This is the fifth increase in fuel prices since ending a four and a half month pause on March 22. On all four occasions fuel prices were hiked by 80 paisa per liter. Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath inaugurated the SpiceJet Gorakhpur to Varanasi flight via video conferencing on Sunday. Union Civil Aviation Minister Joydi Radhidya Sindhya also participated in the function from Madhya Pradesh's Gwalior today. Speaking on the occasion, CM Yogi said that nine airports are running in Uttar Pradesh and air connect- connectivity has vastly improved in 5 years. The work of connecting other countries is also going on. आज उत्तर प्रदेश के नौ एयरपोर्ट पूरी तरह क्रियाशील हो चुके हैं यह सब संभव हो पाया है आदरणीय प्रधानमंत्री जी के मार्गदर्शन और नेतृत्व के कारण आज से पांच वर्ष पहले उत्तर प्रदेश के जो चार एयरपोर्ट क्रियाशील थे उनमें से मात्र देश के 25 गंतव्यों तक की ही यात्रा संभव हो पाती थी आज इसने आज देश के अंदर वायु क्षेत्र में जिस तेजी के साथ विकास हुआ है उत्तर प्रदेश आज उसका एक बेहतरीन उदाहरण प्रस्तुत कर रहा है University Grants Commission on Saturday issued a public notice to Indian students regarding fresh admissions in foreign countries in view of covid-19 pandemic. Well, the reason why both uh, UGC and AICTE have decided to issue this public notice 
is because thousands of our students who have uh, returned to India during the COVID period are unable to go back to China to continue their studies. That is why we have advised them uh, to pay due diligence uh, while they are applying for fresh admissions in, uh, uh, in foreign countries. And we have also said that uh, any online degrees that the students may attend, uh, which do not have prior permission from UGC and AACTE, will not be recognized. After Delhi Municipal Corporation Amendment Bill 2022 was introduced in Lok Sabha by Central Government on March 25, Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Ketuwal criticized the bill and said that the MCT bill is being brought to stall the civic polls. जो बिल है वो केवल और केवल चुनाव स्थगित करने के लिए लाया गया मतलब उस पूरे बिल के अंदर मोटे मोटे तौर पे देखे तो दो ही बातें हैं एक बात तो ये कि दो से घटा के ढाई सौ कर दिए इससे क्या फायदा हुआ भाई पहले दो सौ थे अब ढाई सौ कर दिए तो कोई लॉजिक नहीं कुछ नहीं क्यों किया किस लिए किया एक ही कारण है कि दो से ढाई कर दिए तो अब डिलिमिटेशन होगा अगर सेम रख दे तो डिलिमिटेशन नहीं होता तो अब डिलिमिटेशन होगा डिलिमिटेशन होगा तो साल दो साल के लिए चुनाव गए तो चुनाव टालने के लिए किया और दूसरा कि पूरा का पूरा एमसीडी जो है वो अब केंद्र सरकार चलाएगी ये तो संविधान के ही खिलाफ है तो एक बारी बिल आ जाए इसको हम भी स्टडी करेंगे अगर जरूरत हुई तो हम कोर्ट में चैलेंज करेंगे फिर इसको Delhi Deputy Chief Minister Manish Sisodia claimed that Delhi is the startup capital of the country and they want you to become employers. Delhi आज देश में स्टार्टअप की राजधानी है और हम चाहते हैं कि जो रोजगार ढूंढ रहे हमारे नौजवान हैं वो रोजगार देने वाले बन जाएं एक बड़ी संख्या में उसमें से रोजगार देने वाले बन जाएं नौकरियां देने वाले लोग बन जाएं तो यही स्टार्टअप को सपोर्ट करने के लिए अभी जो कोई बच्चा अपना कोई नौजवान अपना कोई काम शुरू करना चाहता है स्टार्टअप में एंटरप्रेनर uh, बनना चाहता है तो उसकी सबसे बड़ी समस्या है कि उसको सरकारी झंझटों में बहुत पढ़ना पड़ता है उसका 90 परसेंट टाइम तो सरकारी झंझट में जाता है और 10 परसेंट अपने आइडिया पे काम करने पे जाता है तो सरकार की स्टार्टअप पॉलिसी में उसका जो 90 परसेंट झंझट है वो सरकार दूर करेगी तो हम चाहेंगे फिर वो अपना हंड्रेड अपने रोजगार को दे अपने स्टार्टअप को दे और उसमें इतनी ग्रोथ लाए कि नई नौकरियां निकले कश्मीर फाइल्स ऑन संडे क्रॉस टू बीस टू फिफ्टी ग्रोर एट बॉक्स ऑफ एस ग्लोबली The Vivek Agnihotri directorial has also bounced back at the home box office as it minted rupees 7.25 crore on Saturday, a jump of rupees 2.75 crore from Friday. The film, which released in theaters on March 11, is based on the exodus of Kashmiri pandits residing in Kashmir Valley in the 1990s. On Sunday, Vivek Agnihotri took to Instagram and shared a poster of the Kashmir Files breaching the rupees 250 crore club. The poster read the Kashmir Files. Worldwide box office rupees 252.45 crore in 16 days. It also read third Sunday box office India rupees 7.60 crore. As per box office India.com, the Kashmir Files was excellent on its third Saturday with collections in the 7.50 crore net range which is 65 to 70 percent up from the previous day. The film has now collected around 217.50 crore net and should easily cross the 225 crore net mark after the third weekend. Despite the completion of RRR, this film could still do a 35 crore net plus third week. During a press conference in Popal, Vivek had said about the film premiering in the US and on political connections of the film. That's all for now. Keep watching Hornbill TV.